Bank Nat West has said it will not pay £7.6 million in potential payments to former chief executive Dame Alison Rose. That's after she left the company in July amid the fallout over the debanking row with Nigel Farage. Well, joining me to discuss this is the former advisor to the Bank of England, Dr. Roger Gewolb. And uh, Roger, uh, I suppose they could do very little other than this. There was a huge sort of uh, consternation in the media about this almost £8 million golden handshake, as they're sometimes known. Um, why was this proposed in the first place? Um, that's really hard to say, Tom. Um but I think you're right. There was a groundswell of public opinion against this. I mean, after all, we still own, having bailed out Nat West from its latest uh, disaster, we still own 40%. And any activist investment fund, any hedge fund that owned that percentage of a bank like this would be telling them what to do probably every morning at a breakfast meeting. So we certainly are entitled to have our voice heard. And that is why I said on GB News recently uh, that if Dame Allison takes a very large payout, I would expect her to make a public statement herself or through her representatives to us about why she's doing that. She has not spoken. I guess she's got nothing to say. I therefore suppose that the board thought we better not do this and they have decided uh, not to make that giant payoff to her. Now, of course, they've said they will not pay the full, what is it, 7.6 million. They haven't said what they will pay. I suppose that we, we could end up in a situation where she still does get a couple of million quid for uh, having messed up so spectacularly. Well, that's a question. You're absolutely right. That's a question of whether, by the way, apparently I hear she she doesn't need the money and she's so upset with Nigel Farage starting all this having called it a sick joke, that um, somebody told me she's going to pay that money to Elon Musk to put Nigel into outer space, yeah? So, <laughs> um, you know, she she gets that couple of million or not, depending on whether she has breached her employment contract. And that's really a question for the lawyers who mm. know the terms of that contract and the actual facts here. It's not a matter on which we can really second guess. So, if she does get that, it's probably that she has not mm. formally breached her contract. Now, I've been looking at the reason why some of these big CEOs tend to get a lot of money when they leave, when they've done something wrong. They seem to get more money than when they do something right. And I found some interesting analysis by the American Accounting Association. They've done research that says, we find if managers receive a sufficiently large payout in the event of being dismissed, they no longer delay the disclosure of bad news. It's almost like an incentive for CEOs, if there's been something that's going wrong, to not cover it up, to come forward, to put their hands up. Because if they don't get this sort of payment, they might then cover up what's been going on in their organisation. Do you agree with that sort of analysis? Well, I, it's, a really, it's, a really, it's a great point. It's a very good point. But it depends uh, which way it cuts, Tom. I think depending on what the actual... Uh, uh, wrongdoing, uh, misfeasance, malfeasance, whatever, is they may want to go that route and ensure that it's properly disclosed, uh, or they may want, you know, what you've probably heard a lot more often than that, is they may want an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement signed, a gagging order, where the person is paid off, is, is paid hush money, if you will, to shut up, uh, you know, shut their gob and never talk about it to anyone. It depends well, on the circumstances. Dr. Roger Kewob, I'm afraid we've run to the end of the segment, but thank you so much for your analysis. It's a fascinating conundrum that I suppose NatWest find themselves in.